and welcome to the Dyslexia Awards 2020. A little bit different this year, we're not in a big room in Ingenuity with tables and chairs and meals. However, if you want to dress to the nines to watch the event, you're more than welcome. You can even take a picture and send it to us, or you can sit back and relax in your comfies and watch on the sofa as we hear from some amazing dyslexics, what they've done and achieved over the past 12 months, and some of the businesses and sponsors that have supported and enabled them to do so. We've got some great stories for you to hear online, right here on the Dyslexia Awards 2020 for the West Midlands. Enjoy as we celebrate dyslexics in the West Midlands. Hello and welcome to the Dyslexia Awards. We're here to celebrate the achievements of local dyslexics of all ages and those employers and educators who provide positive support, pursue good practice and recognise and nurture dyslexic talent. We normally have two professional photographers, Ian Reynolds, aka I4 Images, and Michael Wilkinson from In Focus Photography, to capture the awards evening on film and in photo. You will see their photos on the screen this evening, but tonight we're relying on you to send us your photographs. Finalists will need to take a photograph, a selfie, and capture the spirit of the 2020 Dyslexia Awards. And if you can email your favourites over to Dyslexia Awards so they can add them to the Dyslexia Awards photo gallery, that would be great too. We would encourage you to use social media at Dyslexia Awards, hashtag Dyslexia Awards, Twitter and Facebook. And now we're on Instagram. So what is the Dyslexia Awards all about? A little earlier, I sat down with Ellie and we had a social distance chat. The awards this year are very different. Rather than being in a big hall, we're sat in a soundproof studio, but still in Ironbridge, in fairness. Ellie, quite a challenge this year to put the event together. Oh, yeah, very much so. I have um, never been reminded of how autistic I am until recently, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I am absolutely delighted it's happening, and I'm going to cry if I get a little bit emotional, forgive me. Uh, with your help, Sassy's help, and um, Sid, who does the website, just implanting those visuals on me because it was really hard to imagine how it would look. And I'm really excited now. So the event's been going on for quite a while now. And I think that gives you something to draw from in terms yeah. of making a virtual event for it. But for anybody who doesn't know, how did it all start? Oh, well, it all started years ago with me being a pain to my friends and family, pestering them about I'd like to do an awards. I know so many amazing dyslexics who just don't, there's no light shone on what they do and I wanted to kind of hide they hide their light under a bushel so to speak and I wanted to promote the positive side of dyslexia and turn a lot of the negative press and publicity on its head really and just say look dyslexia doesn't mean you can't do anything in fact it actually brings quite a lot of talents with it most of the time and when you start digging into sort of famous people or company directors or key people in the business community there's an awful lot of us about there is there is and one of the things i wanted to do was was take the focus off of famous people mm. because i worked with um, some teenagers many years ago and talking about famous people um a couple of the teenagers got a bit disheartened with the fact that they thought they were doing terribly in school and that using famous people as examples put pressure on them to become a millionaire or right. to do really well and actually all we really want is for our children to be happy so mm. if we can use local people as examples so this year across the west midlands region it's much more accessible to be luke the firefighter from bridge north or um lindy the cake maker who's international but is on our doorstep it's just it's nice to have local people and this year, the award has widened somewhat out from Shropshire to include the West Midlands. I know, excited. I nearly went UK wide, but as it's only me that we'll does save that for next year. <laughs> as it's only me that does the admin, I was told by my friends and family to be very careful and just do it steadily. So, yes, very exciting. And so, yes. what difference will it mean involving the West Midlands as well as Shropshire? A wider audience. I, I spent a lot of time telling people from the West Midlands region. I'm really sorry, but you can't be nominated for the awards because you're not from or living in Shropshire so this time hopefully it will save me some time in having to write to people to say no sorry you can't be nominated and it was horrible really having to turn people away mm. so and the awards this year is a virtual event you've still got a whole selection I think there's nine different awards categories going on and you'll still hear some great stories from some inspirational and award-winning dyslexics absolutely it's um, just outstanding always is blows me away every year I would like to welcome to the stage dyslexia awards founder Elizabeth Wilkinson 
a.k.a. Ellie. Wow, what can I say except thank you so much to everybody involved in making the 2020 Dyslexia Awards celebration and awards film possible. You are all amazing. A little bit about how this all came about. In the first lockdown, I had a conversation over video call with the lovely Nicola and Robert Rust from Exclusive Solutions, who are very good friends of mine. And Rusty, Rob, as we like to call him Rusty, got really excited and said, Al, we're still doing the awards this year, aren't we? And I, in a cloud of autism, not being able to see what we were going to be able to do, was, I don't think so, I don't think it's possible. Their enthusiasm and alternative suggestions and solutions for what we could do was infectious and just inspiring. It made me think, OK, maybe there's a possibility. That led to a conversation with Sid Edwards from Tuzungo Web Design, who is our web designer, and a whole lot more than that, really. He then talked to me about how it might look and how we could get Paul Shuttleworth in, our normal Master of Ceremonies. Then that led to a conversation with Paul Shuttleworth, who fried my brain over a Zoom call for nearly two hours, as usual, because Paul works 100 times faster than I do. That then led to a conversation with Stage and Studio Services, or SAS as we like to call them, who Trev just worked his normal calming magic and went, no problem, we can do that. Tell us what you want, we'll get it done. Then, very mindful of the fact that this is not the best year to be asking companies for money, I sent an email out to our award sponsors and just said, hey, this is what we're going to be doing this year. Are any of you on board? Can you support? Nine of them messaged back and said, absolutely, yes, we'd love to be and we can be. That then led to filming, scripts, opening the nominations and everything else that you all know about from here on in if you're involved and you're a finalist. Then that led to the question of finalist goodie boxes. So I started calling around some of our table gift sponsors and explaining, I'm really sorry, we don't have tables for you to sponsor this year. And by my second phone call, to, which was to Bespoke Computing, Chris Pallett just said, no problem, count us in and we'll cover the cost of the goodie bags, sending them out to the finalists. Brilliant idea. That blew me away. And then even more to that, Lorna, his office manager, decided that they would actually do the goodie boxes for me. So Lorna, thank you. You have no idea the stress that you have taken out for me. It's amazing. So your goodie boxes finalists are there this evening courtesy of Bespoke Computing. There is also a few extra goodies in your box from us, from the Dyslexia Awards tribe and team, as a little thank you and some mementos. Really important here to note that your Dyslexia Awards coasters, made by Fusing Ideas Glass, are actually unique and a limited edition. So please look after them and have them every time you use them. Just remember how amazing you are. OK, so now on to my usual words of wisdom. Normally I'm stood on a stage and there's a load of people in front of me and a load of finalists who are eagerly awaiting to find out if they've won. And we eat food and we be merry and we just have a really amazing night. But in my speech, I always say every year, think BAFTA. You never see somebody who has an actor who's been nominated for a BAFTA award shy away from the fact maybe they haven't won. You always see people introduced as BAFTA award nominee. So I want you as finalists to channel your inner BAFTA. Think about how proud and rightly so all those actors that are nominated for BAFTA awards are. Now I'm not likening the Dyslexia Awards to be in the same giddy heights as the BAFTAs. However, the emotion that is involved and the prestige and the pride that you should feel being nominated, being a finalist, being a winner for the Dyslexia Awards is the same. People think enough of you to nominate you for these awards. Take that with pride, enjoy that, read your nominations, keep them, and remember, you're amazing. So, think BAFTA, channel your inner BAFTA, be proud of what you have achieved and what you are doing. So, on with the awards. We would like to thank our sponsors that you can currently see on screen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Dyslexia Awards have been made possible thanks to a whole tribe of Dyslexia Awards people who have rallied in order to make this year's pre-recorded awards and celebration film possible. This includes a special thanks for the financial contributions made by our individual awards and Goodie Box sponsors. First off, let's meet our amazing award sponsors. Bridge Psychology, Dr. Peter Corr, Community Shining Star, age 13 to 19 award sponsor. Darwin Wealth Management, Med Evans, Supportive Employer Award Sponsor. Evolve Design Limited, Sue Dewhurst, Amazing Artist Award Sponsor. Exclusive Solutions, Robert and Nicola Russ, Innovation Award Sponsor. Federation of Small Business, Entrepreneur Award Sponsor. Global Freight Services, Anton Gunter, Community Shining Star 20 Plus Award Sponsor. In the Loop, Sally Joyner, Learning Support Award Sponsor. Scanning Pens Limited, Jim Bowen, Special Education Needs Coordinator Award Sponsor. Bike Eye Web Design, Rob Udakis, Exceptional Educator Award Sponsor. Next is our amazing Bespoke 2020 finalist goodie box sponsors, Bespoke Computing Limited. Thanks to Chris Pallett, Managing Director of the Bespoke Computing, who very generously covered the cost of the finalist goodie boxes. And I know Ellie would particularly like to thank Lorna at Bespoke Computing for taking the goodie boxes off her to-do list. It really did make a massive difference to her stress levels. So thank you, Lorna. <laughs> Please take a moment to welcome our amazing 2020 finalists to the virtual stage. Now, you may have noticed that on the screen we have some blank avatar images there. This is because, unlike lots of other awards, we are very aware that not everybody wants or can be in the public eye, and we never force anyone to do so. Of course, this can be a bit tricky when it comes to the awards night and films, but we work round it and it never affects the outcome of the judges' decisions. All our finalists, even if they're not happy to appear in the film, will by now have received their finalist goodie boxes, which we hope they'll enjoy whilst watching this film this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 2020 Dyslexic Award finalists. <laughs> Historically, Dyslexic Awards have been open for nominations of people living in, working in, or who are from Shropshire. However, this year's nominations were extended to the West Midlands region, and for the 2021 Dyslexia Awards, we will be open to the whole of the UK. And we are just putting the finishing touches on a brand new award, which will be introduced that will be open to international nominations. So, on with this year's awards. This year we started off with the 2020 Community Shining Star Award, age 13 to 19, sponsored by Global Freight Services Limited. Welcome the Managing Director of Global Freight Services to the stage. My name is Anton Gunther and I'm Managing Director of Global Freight Services. So Anton, tell us a little bit about what Global Freight Services do and why you sponsor the Dyslexia Awards. Global Freight Service is an exciting world of international logistics where we move things from A to B, doesn't matter how big or small, um, we're able to do anything from road, sea or air. For us as a company based in Telford, it's important for us to sponsor and promote local causes. We've known Ellie for a, a number of years now. Um, she does a great job for um, the Dyslexia Awards, for dyslexics in the area, for dyslexic in the UK. So we wanted to show our support uh, by sponsoring this award. So, Anton, you've been involved in the Dyslexia Awards since the beginning. Why did you get involved and what would you say is the top dyslexic skill? Before sponsoring this award, I didn't really know much about dyslexia. For me, dyslexia was something that someone said because they got a spelling mistake. They made a mistake in writing a sentence. Since sponsoring the award and getting involved in the judging, I've actually learned what dyslexia means. I'd say the top skill that I've noticed from people that I know that has dyslexia is that you don't actually know they have dyslexia because they hide it so well or you just don't notice it because they are who they are. I think for me it's important that you know, dyslexia, the more we sponsor the award, the more we work with this award, the more we learn about it, the more we can tell other people about it. And as a non-dyslexic, I sometimes feel like we put things like dyslexia to one side because we don't understand it. But over the last few years, I've got to understand it, got to know people with dyslexia, 
and, and I'll reiterate the one thing I noticed about people with, with dyslexia and their top skill is that you don't actually know they've got dyslexia. The criteria for this award was written based upon a young shining star called Katie McGowan. Diagnosed with dyslexia as a child, Katie became a really positive advocate in her community, inspiring people and always ready to help out at community events, town carnivals, dyslexia information days, and now in her 30s, she is an integral part of the Dyslexia Information Day events and the Dyslexia Awards. In fact, in 2016, Katie was the recipient of the only Founders Award to date, and she was the head judge on the panel of shining star awards award judges and on the evening of the awards her and her best friend Claire will be found behind the scenes handing over golden envelopes and trophies. <music> Anton I understand you're one of the three judges for the Shining Star Awards. How are the Shining Star Awards different to the other awards? These awards are different to other awards that we normally sponsor. They based on a personal level rather than a professional level. We're not judging people on what they do at work or how much money they generate. We're judging on how much of a difference they make to their community. What is our first award all about? Well, this award was open for nominations from dyslexic teenagers living in or from the West Midlands region in the UK who are shining stars in their community and age between 13 and 19. Nominations in this category are the kind of teenagers who are inspiring, supportive, encouraging, have great community spirit, dedicated to others. They may have undertaken an excellence at something like a sponsor activity for a fundraising challenge. They have helped others achieve great things. In short, nominees for Teenage Shining Star categories are the kind of teenager who, when their name is mentioned, they walk into the room, people smile. So let's find out who the winner is. Anton, over to you. In this envelope, I have the winner of the Shining Star Teenage category. And the winner is Isaac Barraclough. Isaac Barraclough. Hi. My name is Isaac and I was diagnosed with dyslexia in primary school. I was lucky because I was able to get support in school, which helped, me, which helped me go to college. One of my passions is working with the church. I really enjoy working with young children and helping see, and help them see the positives in life. I also enjoy chatting to the older congregation and listening to their stories. I'm very proud of my time I spent in sea cadets as it's given me many opportunities and experiences. I really enjoy flying with a feet air arm. I really enjoy working with the Mayor of Telford and Rekin and taking part in many of his fundraising activities for the local community. Most people see dyslexia as a negative, but some things are positive. It's how we appreciate how many people struggle in different ways. It's also taught me the benefits of resilience and hard work. As a neighbour cadet, I help instruct and tutor the other recruits. I do this in a very hands-on and visual way. I don't know it helps many people. My real passion is fixing engines and restoring old ones. My hands-on approach to learning has really helped me with this. Thank you for listening. The Shining Star judges said they were really impressed with what was said about Isaac. In particular, how he always supported other children who find learning and other aspects of school life challenging even when it wasn't the most popular thing to do in the eyes of his peers. They were also impressed that the secondary school he was a member of the school council and that he was the winner in the Top Cadet Award. Isaac is clearly well thought of, highly respected and has a kind, genuine nature. And he does all of this whilst overcoming his own barriers. Isaac Barraclough is a wonderful example of a Dyslexia Awards community shining star. Thank you, Isaac. As this award has shown, we don't make anyone be on film or stage that doesn't want to be there. In true dyslexic style, we adapt and find a way round. You might also like to know that the judge's decision always stands. The winner of an award once chosen is always the winner, unless the person withdraws from the awards completely. And so far, that has never happened. In fact, this year, our winners' names have been sent out to Fusing Ideas Glass, our trophy makers, before our finalists have even been notified. The whole point of the Dyslexia Awards is to inspire, empower and raise positive dyslexia awareness. A little hard to do if all of our nominees and finalists and winners were to shy away from the camera or public appearance. So we're always thankful and relieved and grateful to those who jump on board and shout loud and proud about being part of the Dyslexia Awards story. 
The winner of the 2019 Senko Awards, Lauren Reeves, was too shy to attend the awards, so he invited her initial nominator, Lisa Marie Welsh, to represent her. In fact, you can find an interview with Lisa and I filmed by Moogie's Media on the Ellie the DDC YouTube channel if you're interested in hearing why Lisa nominated Lauren. OK, on with the awards. Exceptional Educator Award. Now, our Educator Award has been created to celebrate and shine a light on the brilliant educators who inspire, empower their dyslexic students to be all they can be. The Dyslexia Awards tribe, dyslexics and non-dyslexics alike, all recognise the value and importance of good educators. Dyslexic Awards founder Ellie wants to make sure we took the opportunity to celebrate and thank educators who do an amazing job. In fact, the Senko and Educators Award category were written in 2016, inspired by two of our three Educator Award judges, Kate Edwards and Michelle Dawes. All three of our Education Awards judges are outstanding professionals who consistently go above and beyond the call of duty to inspire, empower and have a positive impact. So without further ado, let's meet the sponsor of the 2020 Exceptional Educator Award, Vikai Web Design. My name is Rob Udakis of Vikai Web Design. Vikai Web Design is a, as it says in the name of the company, is a web design company. Um, we specialise in early years websites, that's um, nurseries, um, after club schools, breakfast clubs, um, child minders, anything to do with the early years um, we specialise in. Um, however, we also do um, your run of, run of the mill websites, um, which we'll turn a hand to. My role at Vikai Web Design is, well, basically, I'm the web designer. Um, I take your ideas, I put them onto a website, and I make a website that is, that is unique as you are. So, Rob, what got you involved in the Dyslexia Awards, and what would you say is the best thing about being dyslexic? We sponsor the um, Dyslexia Awards. It's our little way of being able to give back. Since being diagnosed with dyslexia, I've learned so much about dyslexia, about being dyslexic. Um, I've received an enormous amount of help. Um, I had the opportunity to work with one of the UK's leading dyslexia specialists and it's changed my life. So that's the only way I can describe it. Best thing about it being dyslexic is you get to use a whole load of new kit. I shall refer to my notes. Great things about it being dyslexic is I believe I'm a good problem solver, is I see the bigger picture I can the ability to think outside of the box. All these attributes, I believe, is down to being dyslexic. Thanks, Rob. So you know firsthand that the difference an inspirational educator can make. So our Exceptional Educator Award was open to nominations of teachers, trainers and tutors from the West Midlands region who, among other things, have a positive, proactive and inclusive attitude, are dyslexic aware and dyslexia friendly, are encouraging and inspirational, we asked our nominators to tell us about these educators, what made them exceptional, how they go above and beyond the call of duty, and how they not only practice, but promote inclusivity, awareness, and how they positively impact upon meeting and understanding the needs of their learners, and how they motivate, inspire, and empower their students to reach their full potential. And the nominations did not disappoint. Our judges would like to thank all our nominees for their hard work and dedication, and agreed unanimously on our three finalists. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Rebecca Greenhoud and I'm one of the finalists for the Exceptional Educator Award 2020. I'm really excited about this. I've never been nominated for something as amazing as this, so I'd just like to say thank you very much. What do I love about being dyslexic? Uh, I don't think like anybody else. Um, I'm amazingly fast um, and ridiculous at problem solving. Um, but the best thing about being me is my imagination and my imaginative approach to education that enables all children to succeed and make little steps of success that we all get to celebrate and I think that's the main thing about education. 
Hi, my name's Denise McGowan and I'm thrilled to be um, a finalist in the Exceptional Educator category for the Dyslexia Awards. Um, I think being dyslexic and being an educator means that I'm able to actually see other people's ways of learning a lot easier and hopefully adapt my teaching styles so that it enables people to actually understand and learn more. Hi, my name is Rosie Woodcock and I've been nominated for the Exceptional Educator Award. Um, I currently work in a land-based college in the animal care department. I'm working towards my PGCE and post-compulsory education. I was delighted to be nominated for this award by my teacher. Um, it's lovely to be recognised as being dyslexic. It's not often a subject that I've spoken about. Um, being dyslexic hasn't stopped me achieving what I want and has made me work harder to achieve it. So let's find out who the winner is. Rob, over to you. Okay, guys. Um... First of all, congratulations for being nominees and we're also very, very proud of you and would like to say a big thank you for coming tonight. The winners are in here, so good luck to everyone. And the winner is... naturally inclusive and dyslexia aware, always willing to go the extra mile for her students, tailoring her lessons to different abilities in order to stretch and challenge them accordingly. Create activities such as keeping students engaged and embedded in maths and English and help them improve in all their subject areas. She is motivational to her peers, inspiring others with her positivity and creativity. Rosie is a brilliant example of someone who does not see dyslexia as an inhibitor. She keeps a clear head and ensures that everyone around her feels supported and leads by example with vigour and calm energy. Congratulations Rosie, our 2020 Exceptional Educator Award winner. Okay, so next up is our Support Employer Award, which is sponsored by Darwin Wealth Management and is about recognition and celebration of supportive employers. Our nominees will be employers who have a positive, supportive and proactive approach, a positive can-do attitude, who implement reasonable adjustments where needed and are positive and adaptive in their approach to training and are dyslexic aware, encouraging and inspirational. Let's find out a little bit more about our award sponsor. My name is Med Evans and I'm from a company called Darwin Wealth Management and we're sponsoring the Supportive Employer Award. Darwin Wealth Management are independent financial advisors based in Shropshire and quite simply we look at people's financial needs and their requirements and we do the very best that we can to look after them. The reason why Darwin Wealth Management um, sponsor the awards is that it's, it's pretty passionate, it's personal to me um, and Ellie who has um, created these wonderful awards um, has helped me a lot. I got tested and at the age of 50, and I'm 52 now, I found out I was dyslexic. So um, it's always been passionate to me because of my own children and the, and the importance of around that, um, but even more so now because I'm part of the club. Woo woo! Thanks Med. For you, what's the best thing about being dyslexic? The best thing about being dyslexic, I think from my, my perspective, because I didn't know I was dyslexic until I was, I was 50, is that maybe there were certain things in the back of my mind that I thought I was slightly different, um, but didn't really know that, and, and always found ways to, to excel um, and do the best, very best that I can. Um, and ultimately, when I suppose when I found out that I was dyslexic, it kind of just put a big smile on my face, just sort of saying, actually, I'm a slightly better version of myself than I was before because although dyslexia, you know, dyslexia is not a disability, it's just a, a style of something. Um, and I just think that it allows us to have um, uniqueness, a unique ability to maybe look at things slightly differently. Um, and that makes us different from the rest of the world in a great way. Thanks, Med. OK, let's meet our finalists. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deborah Eudakis and I am the Managing Director at Deborah Eudakis Consultancy Limited. I'm an early years specialist and I work with early years providers, local authorities, schools and help them to develop their provision 
to improve outcomes for children. I'm delighted to be nominated for the award of supporting employer. I think it's incredibly important that we invest in our employers so that we can bring out the best in them and to give them every opportunity to fulfil their potential. Because by doing so, we're also giving our businesses every chance of success. I also just want to say good luck to all of the um, nominees and finalists tonight. I wish you every success and I hope you have a brilliant evening. Hi, I'm Natalie Parkinson, the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Officer for Shropshire Fire and Rescue Service. And I'm Dave Myers, the Deputy Chief Officer for Shropshire Fire and Rescue Service. We're really pleased to be nominated again and find ourselves in the finalist lists after having been Employer of the Year 2017. It's a great honour and a privilege to be up there with all the other great employers. We're really pleased that our inclusive culture of the organisation has allowed us to be in this position again. We value all the efforts our staff make in keeping our community safe, but particularly those who do it with the challenges faced with dyslexia. We really value the different skills that people with dyslexia bring to the organisation, including their different ways of problem solving and the way that they support each other in the organisation. Hi, my name's Charlotte and I won the Shining Star Training Award in 2016. My employee is Seven Hospice in Shrewsbury. Um, I'm so, so excited that they have um, become a finalist for this year's Dyslexia Awards and it would be amazing to see them win. They've been so supportive to me and I absolutely love my job. All three of the Supportive Employer Awards judges are dyslexic and they wanted to express how impressed they were with all the nominees and wanted in particular to thank and highlight the three finalists who are shining examples of what supportive employers can do. Demonstrating wonderfully how this can be achieved regardless of the number of employees, the size or nature of the business or organisation, the judges would also like to thank all three finalists and encourage them to keep up the good work. Now, this award took some deliberation between our judges, lots of conversation, cases and points made and agreed, disagreed, points remade, the criteria revisited several times and then finally a decision was reached and all the judges agreed. OK, Med, over to you. OK, the moment of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, and the winner is... Selecting a winner from this category was difficult as all the nominees had so many winning qualities. We decided upon Shropshire Fire and Rescue Services because of the great lengths they have gone to to set up support structures for people with dyslexia and the sheer number of people that their awareness raising efforts have benefited, both within the organisation and the wider community too. Next up is our Amazing Artist Award, sponsored by Evolve Design Limited. Simply put, our Amazing Artist Award is open for nominations of dyslexic artists who create art that people think is amazing. The award is about how people are inspired and the influences that the art has. We ask nominators to tell us how the artist's art wows, inspires and makes them feel or amazes them with no restrictions on the style or the medium of the art in the category. Let's meet our amazing artist award sponsor, Evolve Design Limited. Hi, I'm Sue Dewhurst and my company is Evolve Design Homes. Um, we specialise in doing bespoke, low energy homes for people all over the UK. Why are you involved in the Dyslexia Award and what in your experience is the top skills of dyslexics? We got involved with the Dyslexia Awards really because I was just so amazed at the work that Ellie was doing. My husband and my stepson are both severely dyslexic and uh, it, it just, I know the struggles they went through and I thought if anybody's giving help or acknowledgement to this area then it needed to be, um, you know, welcomed and supportive. I think when people have got something or they're made to feel different, it's so important to recognise the talents that they do have 
And the one thing I've realized, especially with dyslexia, is yes, they may not be very good at reading or they may have a problem with numbers, as my niece does, um, but they're absolutely brilliant in other areas. And that's really why we support the Amazing Art Award. OK, I see the art link now. Thanks, Sue. Oh, hang on. Sue, was there anything else? Just like to add, real shame that COVID has messed things up and that we can't all have a get together this year. Um, you know, it's always nice to dress up and to just celebrate other people's achievements. And it is a, a crying shame that we can't do that this year. But, you know, let's keep everything crossed and hope that next year it all comes back to normal. OK, let's meet our finalists. Hi. My name is Denise McGowan and I'm thrilled to be nominated um, and be a finalist in the Amazing Art category for the Dyslexia Awards. Um, I think it's really um, quite a privilege to be dyslexic and especially as an artist because it means that you are more creative and I find that um, being dyslexic you think outside of the box, in fact what box? So um, creativity, one of the, the main bonuses. Hi there, I'm Nicola Rust from In The Shared and I'm so excited to be a finalist for this year's Amazing Art Award. Thank you so much. It means so much to just be nominated, so thank you, thank you, thank you. The, one of the best things about being dyslexic for me is the fact that it led me to set up in business in 2009 in my shed. Um, I guess thinking differently and having my own ways of working, my own systems and processes and needing to figure things out my own way and design in a way that was different to other people led me to want to start my own business so that I could work the way I wanted to work. OK, so let's get the winner. I have my gold envelope and the winner is... said from the number of and the passion behind the nominations Denise received for this award that it's clear her work has touched the hearts of many in her local community and the breadth of her artistic repertoire as well as the quality of her work coupled with her willingness to share her skills with others especially during these trying times makes her the clear winner and this year's amazing art award. Our next award is the Learning Support Award, sponsored by In The Loop. We believe that the learning support staff have the potential to positively impact and shape the future of students they work with. Their abilities to reach students and their genuine belief in you and your abilities can and does instill self-belief that sticks with you for life. The Dyslexia Awards team believe that learning support staff are worth their weight in gold and this year's nominations prove that we are not the only ones who think that. So, without further ado, let's meet the Learning Support Award sponsor, In The Loop. My name's Sally Joyner and I'm from a company called In The Loop. In The Loop is a hearing loss communication specialist person. So, what I do is I teach people who are losing their hearing how to lip read and everybody else how to communicate more effectively with them. So, Sally, what's the best thing about being dyslexic? I don't know what the best thing about being dyslexic is. It's, there's a whole host of things. It's being able to think sometimes outside the box. You sometimes think something really, really fast off the top of your head and you think, oh, no, it's not going to be, that's not going to be useful or nobody's going to think that's a good idea. And then everybody goes, oh, why didn't we think of that? So probably being able to think outside the box sometimes is the best thing about being dyslexic. Why have you chosen to sponsor the Learning Support Award? As an adult, I did more learning probably than ever I did when I was at school. School was an okay experience for me, I was lucky. But as an adult, I did lots of union learning and I was supporting other learners. So for me, support during learning was really, really important. And if I hadn't had it, I wouldn't have been where I am today. I wouldn't have been a teacher. I wouldn't have been um, an educator and I wouldn't have been the person that I am today. So. It's because of all the support that I had as an adult learner is the reason that I support the Learning Support Award. Thanks, Sally. Right then, let's meet the Learning Support Award finalists. 
Hi, I'm Holly Swinton and I am honoured to be a finalist for the Learning Support Awards. Um, the best thing about my dyslexia is my creative problem solving. Um, I feel like I'm a bit of a detective um, in my work assessing and tutoring. Um, so I'm looking for clues, I'm gathering evidence and then hopefully I'm trying to crack the case. Uh, every day my work meeting and working with fellow dyslexics is unique and inspiring and thought provoking like they are themselves. Hi, my name's Lorraine Walsh and I'm a dyslexia tutor. Um, not long back I was teaching a little boy about speech marks. We were looking at, you had to have 66 at the beginning, 99 at the end. Uh, he was very confused about where the 77 and the 88 were. I didn't have an answer, I still don't, but it's this way of looking at things and questioning things which is the greatest strength of being dyslexic. Hi, I'm Sally Reid and I'm delighted to be nominated for the 2020 Dyslexic Awards. I've had the pleasure of working with dyslexic children for many years and the one thing that I've learned is your brain is unique. You are creative, you come up with novel ideas, are brilliant and you're always thinking outside the box. You're intelligent and you can achieve anything you desire. So Sally, over to you to tell us who the winner is. And the winner is in the envelope. And the winner is... A joint winner, ladies and gentlemen, that's a Dyslexia Awards first. We have had an extra category added and created, but never before have we had a joint winner. Congratulations to Holly and Lorraine. Our judges were in total agreement that they were unable to choose between you. Both were all asked in unison if they could have you both as winners. Thank you to all three of our finalists and congratulations to our winners who have just made Dyslexia Awards history. Our judges said Holly builds trust and relationships to make a real difference, spreading the word about dyslexia, turning students around and giving them confidence. She hosts a monthly support group at her own expense and is a wonderful advocate for dyslexics. One nominee said Holly is an amazing teacher and a person who helps children and parents. Lorraine is able to establish trust and relationships with every one of her students. One nominee said, I think the secret to Lorraine's success is threefold. She's empathetic, she's passionate, and above all, she's creative. Every lesson is different. Every child and every teenager gets just what they need in just the way they need it. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next award is the sixth of nine awards. Our Entrepreneur Award is sponsored by the Federation of Small Business. And the criteria for this award is simple. Nominations were open to West Midlands dyslexics who demonstrate good entrepreneurial skills and who have succeeded in their own endeavours. We had a new panel of judges for our Entrepreneur Award this year, made up of three individuals who are experienced and outstanding in their fields. They were all impressed with the nominations for this award. Each of the judges spent some time prior to the judges' Zoom room meeting reading through the nominations, supporting statements, and of course, all three did some research on the individual companies. When they met on their official judges meeting, Ellie was ready and waiting for the usual Entrepreneur Awards discussions to ensue, opposing opinions, questions and deliberations, all healthy and good ones, but still a little exhausting usually. However, this year the panel of judges were in agreement from start to finish. They made the same points and they moved through the nominations. They reached a unanimous decision on both the finalists and the winner. Needless to say, Ellie will be inviting them to do the job next year. So let's meet our award sponsor. Uh, hi, I'm Rich Bishop from the Federation of Small Businesses, where I'm the regional chair for the West Midlands. For the Federation of Small Businesses, it's really important to celebrate all small business success, but especially those who have... Rich, you attended the awards for the first time in 2019. How would you describe the awards and celebration evening to someone who's never been before? 
to someone who's never been to the Dyslexia Awards before, I'd say it's an eye-opening celebration of what is often deemed as sometimes a negative thing. And it's great to see so many people celebrating the difference rather than, uh, I guess, shying away from it. It's, uh, as someone who's dyslexic myself, being in a room full of people who are being celebrated for their dyslexia is just fantastic. Rich, are you dyslexic? Uh, I am dyslexic, yes. Um, I was uh, diagnosed when I was about 21 while I was at university, so it was a bit of a late um, diagnosis. Uh, but uh, it turns out when I started trying to write a 35,000 word dissertation, it, it didn't go amazingly well, and that's how they picked up on it. So what would you say is the best thing about being dyslexic then, Rich? So the best thing about being dyslexic, I mean, it, it's really easy to pick bad things about being dyslexic, but I think for me, it's that it makes me appreciate language a little bit more and the accessibility of language. So there's no point waffling on and making lots and lots of text when small bits will do. So I think I can write very complex things in very simplistic ways because that's how I would want to, to receive it. And, and then that helps get that message across. And when I'm working on things like websites, actually that makes for quite good sales text then and, and actually does quite well at the audience understanding more about it as well. So let's meet our Entrepreneur Award finalists. My name's Lee Jordan Bailey and I'm the owner of Hair Forum in Shrewsbury. How do you feel to be a finalist for the Entrepreneur Awards? Well, very honoured and would like to thank the person that actually nominated me. It came as a complete surprise and a complete shock and especially now to become a, fin a finalist. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Champion. The best thing about being dyslexic for me is being able to communicate in multiple ways, i.e. I'm able to think, speak and listen pretty much all at the same time at a very fast speed and that is very helpful for presenting in effect. So um, when I do guest presenting on QVC television or speak on live radio, it comes very naturally and for that I'm grateful. Thank you. So, hi. I'm Rusty from Exclusive Solutions. I feel honoured that I have been nominated as a finalist for the Entrepreneur Award. Dyslexia is my superpower. OK, Rich, over to you. Who's the winner? Uh, the FSB are very proud to be sponsoring this year's Entrepreneur Award. And the winner is... judges said about the award winner, an amazing individual demonstrating successful entrepreneurial prowess, skills and ability with a clear commitment and investment in her local community, investing time and energy in inspiring young minds. Supporting and investing in her local business community too, she's always evolving and adapting, she's extremely hardworking and focused and refuses to allow dyslexia to hold her back. Innovative and driven Jacqueline is a shining example of entrepreneurial skills and an amazing role model to all. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Our seventh award is the Innovation Award, sponsored by Exclusive Solutions Limited. The Innovation Award is about celebrating and recognising dyslexic innovators who live in and work in and who are from the West Midlands region in the UK. Simply put, the nominees for this award were dyslexic innovators who have introduced new methods, ideas or products. Ladies and gentlemen, you may recognise our next sponsor, husband and wife team, fellow dyslexics and 2020 Dyslexia Award finalists. Let's meet and find out a bit more about our Innovation Award sponsors. So, I'm Rusty, President of Exclusive Solutions and this is... I'm Nicola, First Lady of Exclusive Solutions. We design, install, bespoke smart home solutions. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with the Dyslexia Awards. This isn't your first award. Tell us how it all started for you and you became involved. So I started off by sponsoring in 2016, sponsoring an award. And at that one, I was actually pregnant. Um, 2017 came and I'd had 
Florence then, uh, we'd had Florence should I say, and um, so I didn't sponsor that year because I was on maternity leave, but I was actually the winner of the Innovation Award that year, which is fantastic. So in 2017, Rob came along with me, didn't you? I did And indeed. Florence as well, so it was a, a family affair, um, and Rob was really impressed that year and decided... Sponsor from the last, well, 18 and 19, and again this year in the 2020. Thank you, Rob and Nicola. I think it's safe to say that you are family friends with Ellie, so much so that your daughter calls her Auntie Ellie. So, it was you guys who actually kick-started this year's awards to happen. And ladies and gentlemen, I mention this because it highlights the fact that it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, or what your connection is to the Dyslexia Awards, it makes no difference to the results of the judges' decisions. Our judges are always impartial. And what would you both say is the best thing about being dyslexic? My brain works far more than anyone else's. Mm. It's pretty much the way. My brain literally works way differently to everyone else's in the world. Literally. Well, not everyone, most people's, where I have got a 3D brain that can build things and extract things just completely out of the way where people can read books really easily. I can build massive systems in my head without even thinking about it. I was going to say similarly, but thinking differently. Um, yeah, having that creative brain that sees problems from different angles, I guess. Um, sees things quite rounded and not very lin li linear. <laughs> Your creativity. Ah, oh, that's nice. Thanks. Um, yeah, your innovative brain. Innovative, innovative brain. Innovative brain. Always thinking ahead. Problem solving. Problem solving. Never always. turning off. Yeah, never switches off. Yeah, no. Thinking ahead. Thinking ahead of the game. Yeah. Always learning. All those daydreams turned into something actually real now. Yeah, we're both dreamers, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, we sp I, I sponsor it because being a dyslexic myself, I think it's uh, putting it out there to the atmosphere that it's not a hindrance, it's actually a helpful thing for people to believe in themselves and push forward. Right then, shall we find out who our Innovation Awards finalists are? Hi, my name's Paul Gretton. I work for Aston University as a Business Development Manager, helping to connect companies with researchers, academics and other businesses to help grow their business through product development. I wasn't great at school, failing my exams, because this was back in the time when dyslexia was not really known. But I have great audio and visual memory skills, which have helped me overcome my setbacks. I have gained a degree and travelled the world with business, and I'm now passing that on to other people within Aston University and the business world. I am J MJ, James Mitchell, Product designer, inventor, aka the novelist, published author, Tom West. Hello. Uh, let me say the best thing ab about dyslexia. We have a great exponential expertise of imagination of all of the wonderful things that belong to it. There are thousands, if not millions, of dyslexic people around the world in all forms of careers and lifestyles. Hi there, my name's Simon Washbrook and I'm the founder of Popcorn. Popcorn is the really simple to use customer acquisition software that makes winning sales a joy. We do this by bringing all the essential bits of software an average small business needs to drive sales putting them in one place, making them really simple to use so that you can find the golden nuggets in your database and win more sales. Being selected as a finalist for the Dyslexia Awards, especially around the innovation category, feels absolutely amazing. And I suppose that's on two different levels. So we've got on the business side, it feels wonderful because it's kind of acknowledgement for all the hard work and effort we've been putting in over all these years to come up with a product that not only supports customers in general but it also helps people in the dyslexic community and I suppose on a personal level popcorn was born of the fact that I saw all these bits of software out there which were just way too complex for what they needed to be and so for me it's wonderful to get this acknowledgement from the dyslexia awards that it can make a difference and it can innovate and help support people whether they have dyslexia or whether they don't it just makes life and processes around sales so much simpler. Okay, Rob and Nicola, over to you. And, and the, the winner, winner is...
The judges said Simon demonstrated innovation in action with software he's created. His difficulties and struggle through school into university and not being diagnosed until the age of 21 didn't stop him. Starting his own business in 2005 when he recognised a niche in the market motivated by making a difference to so many businesses. We felt he fitted the criteria well by innovating a direct sales and marketing tool. And he's a very worthy winner of this award and a shining example of a dyslexic innovational mind in action. Congratulations, Simon. Our eighth and penultimate award is our Special Educational Needs Coordinator Award, the Senko Award, sponsored by Scanning Pens Limited. For this award, we were looking for Senkos who have a positive and proactive inclusive attitude, are dyslexic aware and dyslexia friendly actively promote dyslexia awareness and inclusion, are good, very good or excellent in their role, go above and beyond the call of duty, lead by example, practicing and promoting inclusivity, inspire staff, students and parents, have positive impact upon the staff and the students, understand and meet the learning needs of the students, motivate and empower students and staff. Let's meet and find out a little bit more about the award sponsor. I am Jim Bowen, I work for Scanning Pens, um, my role is a Secondary Business Development Manager for the UK, Ireland and Scotland. Working for Scanning Pens allows me to um, express um, some of my ideas that I have. Uh, it's been great that they've given me the opportunity to springboard into dyslexia, also talk about some of the, the experiences that I have and it's been an amazing experience being able to empower people about different technology but also just to um, relay some of my experiences to some of the students that I've been around when demonstrating our product. Scanning Pen C, this is a great award. Not only should we be celebrating success, but we also should be talking about dyslexia in, in a positive light as well. And Scanning Pens being that local company and a company that are specifically to help people with dyslexia, I feel it's a great opportunity for us to sponsor them. Thanks, Jim. What would you say is the best thing about being dyslexic? For me, it's, um, it's about the fact that I can think outside the box and, and be creative. Um, I don't see it as, as being different, really. I just see it as I, I just have to work that little bit harder. Um, and I've found ways of working around it. Um, I found technology have been a real success. Um, and I celebrate uh, dyslexia by um, proving people wrong and proving people that thought I was different. Well, you know, I'm doing a really successful job and... I'm happy where I am. Thanks, Jim. So before we find out who the finalists are, we have another Dyslexia Award first here. This award, like all the others, was open for nominations from the West Midlands region of the UK. However, by the nomination's closing date, not one nomination had been submitted. Now, we know it's not possible that there are no worthy nominees in the West Midlands, but we are aware that we're in strange times at the moment. So the Dyslexia Awards founder, Ellie, and award sponsor, Scanning Pens, agreed they would open the award up to the UK a year earlier than planned. And so, with just three and a half days for the UK nominations, and with very little publicity, the UK did not disappoint and nominations of UK Senkos came in. The nominees didn't have time to rally support or get extra information to us or even extra nominations, but they were all over the moon to be nominated and were game to be part of the 2020 Dyslexia Awards, making history as well as the very first UK nominees. Because of this, Ellie and the judges all agreed that the automatic entry into the 2021 awards is only right. So our judges were blown away by the content of the nominations and the pictures painted by them. They thank everyone for their dedication, professionalism and care. Our finalists were agreed unanimously. So without further ado, let's find out who our Senko Award finalists are. Hi, I'm Jenny Hargreaves. In my school, we have a staff shout out every Friday. When I got the call to say that I'd been nominated for this award, it was the best shout out I could possibly imagine. I was both surprised and humbled to be considered for this award. Everyone is unique. Dyslexia is what makes you especially fantastic. It gives you flair and individuality, which makes you uniquely you. Hi everyone, my name's Hayley. I'm from an outstanding secondary school in Liverpool. Thank you so much for this nomination, it truly is an honour. So what's the best thing about being dyslexic? Coming from an educator's point of view, the thing I admire the most in my students is their resilience. 
To witness my pupils' determination, strength and courage on a daily basis is awe-inspiring and inspirational. Now, we have said before we do not force anyone to be on stage at the awards evening and we weren't about to change that just because we were doing a film this year. People have varying reasons for not wanting to appear on stage or screen and it's ours not to question why. What we are interested in is the work they are doing and the impact they are having and letting them know they are doing a great job inspiring the next generation. So, Jim, it's over to you. Who's our winner? And the winner is... impressed that Yvonne had an all-inclusive approach supporting students, staff and parents, spending a lot of time working with students individually to find out what works well for them. She started clubs to help boost confidence, mindfulness, handwriting and social skills, as well as fighting for funding for two counsellors to be based at the school three times a week. Yvonne runs a lot of staff development sessions on how to support SEND students and carry out spot checks in lessons to make sure students are receiving quality that Yvonne expects. At this point in our 2020 Dyslexia Awards celebration film, it's time for our final awards category, the Community Shining Star Award Age 20 Plus, sponsored by Bridge Psychology. This award criteria, like our first award, was written with our own shining stars in mind. So, nominees for this award will be dyslexic over the age of 20, who are inspirational, supportive and encouraging, have great community spirit and commitment, dedicated to helping others, and the kind of person who makes people smile. Let's meet the award sponsor. My name is Peter Kaur and I am the director with Bridge Psychology Services, which is a specialist provider of clinical assessments for children and young people. I work with young people to complete assessments to provide support with understanding their difficulties. So for diagnostic assessments to look at whether somebody might, for example, have autism or ADHD or a learning disability, and um, I provide clinical assessment reports that then can go to provider services, GPs, schools, other services that need to know about the young people uh, in order to be able to put support in place. And what would you say is the best thing and top skill for a dyslexic? I think in terms of a, a top positive trait, uh, two come to mind. I think um, a lot of people with dyslexia I've met are very good at uh, challenging back and standing up to professionals or people who are maybe being a bit dismissive or are not quite clear about their difficulties. So I know that's not the case for everybody, but I'd certainly a number of people I've met, they do have that particular strength. I think having had to do that so many times in so many situations, um, but also, for me, I found that people with dyslexia are very good at helping me to be more thoughtful about the language that I use or about how I communicate with people um, because I can, I can get a sense that they don't quite understand maybe or I'm not communicating in the most helpful way or, and feedback has always been really helpful. Um, so that's, I think, some people might call it being a bit pedantic, but I quite like it because it helps, I think I would think about it more as bringing clarity. Um, and it's, it's very helpful for me because it's easy to get caught up in the jargon. Well, Peter, our 2020 nominations were absolutely all that and more. Our judges commended them on hard work and dedication to making a difference to their community. That was yet again another hard category and yet again another unanimous decision made by our Shining Star Award judging panel. Let's meet our finalists. Hello, my name is Rebecca Nuttall. I am the principal and business owner of Fusion Film and Stage School. Fusion provide examination classes and performance-based workshops for children and adults. I also mentor and coach for the Shropshire Youth Support Trust. I'm going into Shropshire-based schools and working with teenagers who just need a little bit extra support.
Hi, my name's Hayley Jay and I've been nominated within the category of Community Shining Star. I've been creating face coverings throughout lockdown to help Ling and Davis and I really like to thank them back at Furrows where I work because through furlough they've been keeping my job open and I've been able to help a charity which has been fantastic. So thank you very much for making me a finalist within this category. Hi, my name is Paul Gretton. I work for Aston University as a business development manager, helping to connect companies with researchers, academics and other businesses to help grow their business through product development. I wasn't great at school, failing my exams, as this was back in the time when dyslexia was not really known. But I have great audio and visual memory skills, which have helped me overcome my setbacks. I have gained a degree and travelled the world with business and I'm now passing that on to other people within Aston University and the business world. OK, over to you, Peter. Let's find out who the winner is. OK, so let's see who the winner is inside the envelope. And the winner is... <laughs> Judges were impressed with Rebecca's dedication, drive and determination to help children. She stands out from the crowd making sure she's a shining example to all and extremely inspirational to the children that she works with and helps. This was not just a business to her, it was clearly a calling going above and beyond the call of duty in all she does. She's a perfect example of a community shining star and we're delighted to crown her this year's winner. Congratulations Rebecca! A massive thank you to all our sponsors, nominees, supporters, friends and the entire Dyslexia Awards tribe. And a few final words from Ellie. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our Master of Ceremonies, Mr Paul Shuttleworth, Mr Dyslexia Awards himself. Thank you for everything, Paul. Thank you to all of you who were part of tonight and made our 2020 Dyslexia Awards film possible. In particular, Thank you to our brave finalists who all jumped on board, sent in film clips and were brave enough to say yes, I'm dyslexic or yes, I'm a finalist, I'm here and I'm proud. So thank you for that. It took a lot of bravery and you're part of Dyslexia Awards history, which makes me very proud. Thank you. Um, thank you because your bravery and participation and eagerness and acceptance of getting involved in this film makes all those late nights and weekend working worth it. Seriously, it keeps me refuelled and makes me realise that what we're doing here at Dyslexia Awards is really important and other people think so too, so thank you for that. Keep shining, keep shining bright and keep doing what you do. You are all amazing. To our award sponsors and our gift sponsors and our goodie box sponsors, thank you so much. Without you, your financial input, this wouldn't be possible at all. So it really means a lot to be able to get this out there and do this every year. Thank you very much. Now, SAS, Stage and Studio Services. Don't you dare edit this out because I know you have the power to do so. So please leave this in and leave that bit in as well. Colin, I'm recording this as a pre-record, but I have every faith that the film is going to be fab and it's going to look amazing. And I am sorry for any stress I've caused you and any age I've added to your, or taken off of your lifespan. I really appreciate you jumping on board and understanding the ethos of what the awards is about. And that's our finalists and everybody who does an amazing work and, and great jobs. Trev and Sharon, you two are amazing. Your can-do attitude and your sense of calm and still is just brilliant. Your alternative approaches to doing things and your understanding of what we're about and how I work and the ethos of what I want to achieve is just outstanding. Thank you so much for all your support and your help. It really has made a difference and it's made this possible. To all three of you, Colin, Trevor and Sharon, I promise, if we do a film next year, if we can't have a physical awards again next year, I promise I will be so much more organised. I know what we're doing now, I've seen it. And I promise not to stress you out next year. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody involved in making the 2020 Dyslexia Awards film. You are all amazing.
I am blessed to have amazing people around me. Friends, family, sponsors, supporters, service providers who get on board with what we're doing. It makes the difference and it means that we can inspire and empower people all over the country. So thank you so much. To all our finalists and our winners, you are amazing. Keep shining bright, keep shouting loud and keep doing what you do. You are amazing role models. Remember that, continue to do that and continue to be you. To our amazing finalists and winners, continue shining bright and doing what you do. You are amazing. Let's continue to flood our communities with positive dyslexia awareness, shining a light, empowering and inspiring at every opportunity. Remember, think BAFTA.